Hey folks, this is IOE Thermo back with some more World Tanks. As you can see, this is Great Bob in his WZ-132, and this is a Tier 9 game on Stalingrad. So this is the Tier 7 Chinese escape tank, the 132. Um, I played this thing for a while. I couldn't hack it. Um, that's not true. I grounded it all the way out, uh, and then I sold it immediately and knew I would never continue the line because of the fact that this thing has absolutely no gun depression um, and so it just it doesn't work in any kind of role it's, you have to it's just annoying we'll put it that way <laughs> um, but other than, other than the, the no gun depression this is a great vehicle I just couldn't get over that before we get the game started as always if you want to support the channel one of the best things you can do for me is share this with your friends and clanmates and you know help put me on the map get me more subscribers and that way we can get more variety of gameplay and uh, this week's actually been really amazing for that and it's been great watching so many different replays from so many different people so thank you for that and let's just get on into the game as it looks like we're gonna hit a bulldog on the move unfortunately looks can be deceiving and we don't hit a bulldog on the move even though we knew exactly where we was. Um, next time you're sniping in that kind of situation, I recommend pulling back a little bit. So I don't know about all of you, but for me, my scroll wheel uh, determines how far in I zoom. And so when you're, if you're zoomed in this far, you can't necessarily shoot at that fence accurately. But if you're zoomed out a little bit, you have a lot better positioning as to where you should. Uh, you know, get a, a target and stuff like that. And so you're much more likely to hit, uh, especially a fast moving target, directly across your field of view. If you're zoomed out a, a few notches on the scroll wheel. That is all wonderful filler, and uh, it's a great. Wait. Is that Thinking Cashew? That's Thinking Cashew! I know that guy! Huh! Well, anyone, anyone, anyone else on the other team? Or on our team. I wonder if Great Bob realized that thinking cashew during this game. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll see as we finally catch up to that bulldog. That is, in fact, the same bulldog. The only bulldog on the enemy team. You'll see we are actually um, auto-locked into this guy. And great job by uh, Great Bob actually cutting this way, making sure the bulldog could not get to our... Uh, artillery in fact he's just gonna run back out and he's just trying to get back out of our base now thinking in the FV4202 has pushed very far too far into our our base and now Bob is just gonna get on this guy's tail and he's gonna put one shot probably uh, nope never mind thinking dies in a blaze of not glory taken out by his own teammate yeah, that would piss him off. It pissed me off. <laughs> My heart to where it killed me because he wasn't uh, paying attention. Ooh, good shot into the Scorpion. I was hoping we were be able to hit him. It looks like we weren't going to get the shot on the T-54. So great job from Bob not taking that shot he knew he probably wasn't going to be able to make. Okay, we're going to talk a bit about this because... It is currently one versus two. Yes, we have an AT-15, but you can't necessarily depend on your teammates, especially when it's in a slow-moving, heavily armored tank destroyer with no turret on it. The AT-15 has to be pointed in the right direction and pretty much has to be on top of the enemy or a clear line of fire to the enemy if it's going to be helpful. If he goes around this corner and down this ridge line, he is in, on an island as far as that AT-15 is going to be concerned because of this ridge line in the way and of course the buildings now he does have artillery back there but that doesn't necessarily mean the artillery can actually hit him though I'm pretty sure the artillery can in fact hit the scorpion and the T-54 right this second that doesn't mean that he's paying attention or that he's even aiming in in this general direction he could in fact be currently aiming in on the skirmish that's going on over there and Assuming that his defense, his uh, the you know the meme tanks on this wing can handle whatever pushes up, so if Bob goes around this corner, he is 
90% of the time committing suicide unless he has a plan to kill a T-54 and then the Scorpion. Now, if he can take out the Scorpion really fast, he's still probably going to die to a T-54. Unless he does something weird. So let's see what he actually does. Um, keep in mind, I haven't seen this game before. Isolates a T-54 from the Scorpion, goes straight after the Scorpion. Ram kills him and actually puts the T-54 in a situation where he ends up, you know, getting at least shot once or at least shot at by the A-215. I'm not certain if the A-215 penned or not. It doesn't matter. A-15 is on his tail and now it's the T-54 uh, T that's in a bad spot as he's let the A-15 get all the way in. T-54 fires. Bob pops out, takes a shot, but he was auto-locked in and not aiming. If he'd been aiming, he would have hit the tracks. Yeah, just like that, and actually done damage. Enemy T-49 comes up behind our friendly AT-15 and takes him out of the game with a single shot. Uh, now, though, the guy's going to be reloading for a while, and we're going to take advantage of this reload. Now, for some reason, he thinks he can outrun us. I don't understand that, but he definitely ain't going to outrun us, and he ain't going to outrun the shell from the IKV that finishes him off. We know there's an artillery down here somewhere because he got, um, well, because of that, first off. And second off, uh, because of the AT-15 got hit in the little battle with the T-49 before the T-49 fired. And then, of course, the only thing, other thing that can do HE damage on the team, except for the T-49, is obviously the artillery. So, Bob knows there's an artillery in front of him. Whether or not he will actually process that data and, and go try and kill it or not I don't know but it looks kind of like he's gonna go try and do that he d put in a shot where he could and now he in fact knows there he's here he sees the artillery and he gets down um, and puts a solid building between him himself and the AMX he's gonna in fact go after the batchet right now shooting while on the move not bothering to stop and aim and then immediately relocating the entire enemy team know, knew where he was when he was over here. They probably still know where he is, but they don't know where he is anymore. They assume he's continuing to run down this flank. Now, the AMX is pushing over. He thinks he's all of that, and it's just a tier 8. What's, or sorry, it's just a tier 7 scout tank. What's the tier 7 going to do against him? Well, dude, you got yourself outflanked, and you're going to get yourself killed because you keep giving your side to a scout tank. Which will always kill you if you give your side to it, by the way. So, unfortunately for Bob, he wasn't able to get completely around the gun and just keep circling the guy because of the way he was angled up on that hill. And he also wasn't able to get into a position where he was underneath the guy's gun and thus was, was immune from getting hit. And, point of fact, he managed to get himself shot a bunch of times, but he is in a great position to hit this T-29, and he does with a great shell into the side of the turret. And that makes this task a lot easier. Now he's got a shot on the tiger, but he waits and he shoots the T-29, unfortunately not able to kill it. Now the reason, of course, he wants to hit the T-29 is because he wants to take it out of the game. The fewer guns shooting at you, the better. If you have the opportunity to take an enemy tank out of the game, always take it. Unless it will get you killed, in which case, obviously, you know, take the shots that won't get you killed. But... Honestly, if the if the risk to your tank is minimal, or you're gonna get shot once, but you get to take an enemy completely out of the game, it's always worth that. Unfortunately, gun depression strikes, and Bob his gun is pointing up in the air, and he wasn't able to get that first shot into the AT-15 when he wanted it. But of course, he puts the second shot in. He's now even in kills with our T-54, and. I'm glad that concrete was destructible because that would have looked silly if he bounced off that. He's at 4,000 damage and our T-54 is barely alive. He's doing everything he can. Uh, well, now it's a 2-on-1. Except he's got an advantage because the AT-15A has to turn to hit him and he's got him tracked. He should be able to reload before this guy can fix his tracks. That's exactly what happens except now it's a tiger versus a scout tank. There's some bonuses and there's some negatives. So, so we're going to walk through them all as Great Bob runs in a circle. So the bonuses is that we can outspot him probably. Um, 
assuming this was an open map with a, with a ton of bushes, we could totally outspot him, outflank him, and kill him from afar without ever being lit. This is not that kind of map, however. This is a map full of corridors and design, especially to make this easier on heavy tanks. Uh, we're not in a heavy tank. Uh, next downside to this whole plan. That tiger's on full health. If that tiger shoots us once and pens with anything other than HE, well, even if HE pens, obviously, if he shoots us um, and does damage with anything other than HE that doesn't pen, then it's going to go straight in and it's going to kill us. Unless the tiger doesn't have the top gun, but I'm fairly certain I saw the top turret. Oh yeah, great. He's got 1400 health. That's definitely a top turret on it. The Tiger one. Whether or not he is the top gun, I don't know, but... I don't know. That's not the top turret. Look at that. We got lucky. Now, we were not lit. Sixth Sense hasn't gone off. Oh, now it did. Ooh, that was risky. The Tiger one could have been aimed and in and raved to fire, and if he popped out, he could have been shot. Now you see the tire was stopping. Ah, oh, look at that, Bob, with the old tricks up his sleeve. So, what Bob's done is he's made sure the tire knew that he was behind this pile of rocks. He popped out, he shot, he pulled back, he, and then he stayed here until he got unlit. Now that tiger is going to continue to aim in this direction to make sure that the next time Bob pops out from behind these rocks, he dies. Bob's not behind those rocks anymore. He's going to make a left right here. Pop out on this guy's flank. Oh, by a left, I of course mean a right. Uh, because my, my directional sense, don't worry. It's, my directional sense has always been horrible. But anyways, we're going to make a right. Nope. We're going to make a right over here. Okay, we're okay. I was right. We're making a left. See, I know, I, I knew what we we're doing. Cool. I think he's actually going to flank all the way around and come at him from one of these directions, where he can get a truly surprising shot on the tiger. The only problem with this tactic. Oh, we found the tiger again. The tiger must know where we are. Well, he definitely knows now. So the tiger scouted, came to here, realized he didn't want to walk into an ambush, and tried to come around the side, which is a great move by the tiger, by the way. Uh, shows real, uh, what's it called? Thingy, situational awareness, that's the one. Um, unfortunately for him, Bob wasn't where he thought he was, and so it didn't matter. That's the second time we passed that guy's wreck, and this time we passed on the different on, on the other side of his wreck. <laughs> good good job okay so four minutes to whittle down this higher south a little bit more without being able to keep track on them though it's gonna be really difficult all the tiger really has to do to win this or to not lose this really is to find himself in a corner like this or this um or even here um there's a couple other places he could be sitting where he could uh, basically have uh, have it so that Great Bob would have to come at him from a certain direction. Look at that shot, though. No, nope, never mind. He just took out the car. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. He really, really wants to finish him off. This is where it gets critical, guys. Okay, so... This is where... If you get greedy, you pop up in the same spot, the guy's aimed in already, and you die. If he, however, he can spot the tiger with a tiger spawning him, he will be okay. Preferably, you want to do this from a different location than the one you just popped up in. Because you definitely don't want him to blind fire you, or have six sense, he knows he got lit, he fires where you last, last popped up, and guess what? You were still aiming, you die, you lose the game. 
that's a bad way to lose. Don't lose that way. <laughs> Nobody wants to lose that way. This is also a bad plan, unless he hits, cuts a right, which he didn't. He's coming up from approximately the same location. He does, however, finish the tiger off with a last shot and ends this game without firing a single round of gold. Good job, sir. Well played, and um, it definitely didn't feel like 6,000 damage. But obviously it was without any blocked or assistance damage done. Seriously, this much of a carry deserves some kind of epic reward, right? Unfortunately, because this wasn't a premium tank, it was only an ace, a bruiser, duelist, and fire for effect. He does get a coveted high caliber and top gun, but he didn't kill anything that was too, you know. A t Wait. No, he didn't. He only killed the one thing that was two tiers higher than him. And the, all the other things that were two tiers higher than him that he put a bunch of shots in um, died to somebody else. <laughs> Which is really depressing, to be honest. So he killed a bunch of tier sevens and <laughs> did damage to a bunch of other guys, but not enough to kill any of them. Thus, he doesn't get any of the epic medals. And because he wasn't on premium tank... He doesn't get any of the epic rewards either. He does, however, make 1,700 base experience, which is really, really awesome. And, um, look at that, that poor tiger. Must have felt bullied at the end of this game. Actually, all the guys that, um, he picked on, except for the AMX, must have felt bullied in this game. Because look at that, they were all, like, bottom of the board, and just got absolutely wrecked by a... Lone WZ just came in and made their day terrible. Did get shot three times and accepted all three rounds without bothering to bounce any of them. But look at that D distance traveled. Almost seven and a half kilometers for us. 6.3k damage done. 30 shots fired and 27 of them went into the target. And the low ammunition and repair belt tells you he did amazing in this game. And if he'd been running premium, this would have been an epic day for him. But sadly, unfortunately, not quite a 5,000. He really deserved only netting himself 3,000. Still, a great game nevertheless. I can't help but wonder how close he is to a mark of excellence or two marks of excellence. No, because he, he... No, he didn't have a mark of excellence, right? I can't remember. Somebody tell me something helpful. I will see you all later. Thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed this, please support me by sharing this with your friends and clanmates. And please have a wonderful uh, Sunday. And I will see you all next time. This is IOE throughout.